So on this intro to units, which was our homework number one for this chapter, they're asking us to convert this five pi thirds to degrees. We kind of skipped over this one the other day. We didn't do this one. You can find this on your unit circle, but there's a way to do it in case it's not something on your unit circle, because sometimes they'll give you ones that aren't exactly one of those nice ones on the unit circle. Because as you go around the whole entire circle, as we go around the whole entire circle, all of these are different degrees and different radians. We're only talking about the nice ones, okay? So one way to do this is to remember this fact, that pi is equal to 180 degrees, okay? So pi is equal to 180 degrees. So what we're gonna do is like an integrated one when we were using what they call the big one and we were trying to convert units, maybe we had it in miles per hour and we wanted it to be in kilometers per second or something like that. And you had to go through and do that uh, unit analysis is what they called it. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna do one of two things. I'm either gonna set up the ratio pi over 180 degrees, which is really just a fancy one because pi and 180 degrees is the same thing. It's like 60 minutes over an hour, same thing. Or maybe I do it the other direction and I put my 180 degrees over pi. I'm gonna do one or the other, they're both a one. Now, if I'm trying to make it become degrees, that means I wanna get rid of this pi. So I want the pi on bottom so it cancels out, okay? So I'm gonna take my five pi over three and I'm gonna times it by 180 degrees over pi because I want my pi, whoops, my pi and my pi to cancel out. I want degrees. I want the degrees on top because I'm looking for degrees. So if I'm doing this, this and let me do it a little more fainter. This and this are going to cancel out. And when I multiply this, I'm going to go five times 180 over three. Now, myself personally, I'm probably going to take my three into 180, which is a 60. Take 60 times three and get 300 degrees. And that's my answer. But again, you could go five times 180 and divide it by three. But again, I just go, hey, three goes into 180 60 times. 60 times five is 300. Now this one actually is one that was nice on my unit circle, but that I would still solve it this way if it wasn't on my unit circle, nice. Now here, I'm gonna take my 210 degrees and change it to radians, okay? So I'm gonna take my 210 degrees and this time I'm not gonna take 180 degrees over pi, because I want my degrees to cancel. So I'm gonna put my pi over 180 this time. So I'm gonna times it by pi over 180 degrees. And what's gonna cancel is this unit degree, degree, the degrees are canceling. I don't have degrees anymore. So now when I do this, I'm going to get, 210 pi over 180, but I can reduce it. First off, I definitely could take a zero from top and bottom, which really is dividing by 10. And so I'm gonna get 21 pi over 18. Um, I could actually even take a three from both of them. So that would be a seven pi six. So if you can reduce it, reduce it. Now, if I was doing this on my calculator, I would not put in the pi, I would put the 210 over 180 and in using the fraction mode and it will reduce it to, for you. Just don't forget to write the pi with it. And that's your answer, okay? So you're either gonna times it by 180 over pi or pi over 180, depending on what you want to cancel out. I wanna cancel degree, so I want the degree on bottom. I wanna cancel the pi, so I want the pi on bottom.
Okay. On the next section, draw an angle with the given measure and standard form. I know we kind of were starting this when we were talking about this. Now, if you have your composition book out and you see where the radians are, you can refer to that right now when you're doing some of these, if you're having trouble knowing where things are, okay? But what you want to remember is if I'm dealing with thirds, we have fourths, we have thirds, we have six. Six are smaller than thirds, okay? So these ones here are my six. The higher ones are my thirds and the middle one are my fourths, okay? So I'm just gonna jot this down for us just so we all know that this one right here, not that point, but, but if I was to draw an angle to there, this would be representing my pi six. This would be representing a pi fourths. This would be representing a pi thirds. So I want five pi thirds. So I'm going to be looking at these ones here. This, 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 this. Those are my thirds. Those are my thirds. And when they want us to draw this in standard position, I'm going to start by drawing it always with uh, part of the angles on the positive x-axis. And then it's going to be swinging around this direction if it's positive, swinging around this direction if it's negative. So as I'm going around here, since I'm dealing with thirds, right here, when I'm here at pi, I think of that as three pi thirds. And as I continue to go around and add another three pi thirds, this is gonna end up at six pi thirds. So if I want five pi thirds, this is one third off of six pi thirds. This is five pi thirds. This one here would be one third beyond, that would be four pi thirds. So we're gonna go here. And I know we drew this one yesterday, but I just want to re-emphasize. And this is how we're moving. We show that direction. You need to show that arrow. Now, my six are the ones that are just above or below my x-axis. Those are the shorter ones because it's smaller. I am going to start with it being on the positive x-axis. Since it's negative, it's gonna be swinging this direction. And so as I'm coming all the way to here, this is really negative pi, but I'm gonna think of it as negative six pi six. That's a whole, six over six. So I wanna be at negative five pi six. I wanna be a six off right here. That is where I'm gonna be. And then you show the direction. I'm going this direction. That's my negative five pi six. On number five, this time we're dealing with force. My force are the ones, sorry, thought I was in highlight. My fourths are the ones that are the middle ones, okay? Those are the ones that would be like at 45 degrees, which is halfway between zero and 90, okay? Now, again, when I'm drawing this, I'm going to be starting, I'm going to be starting on my um, x-axis. I'm going positive, which is this way. So as I'm going around here to here would be four pi force. That's like one pi. As I continue going all the way around, that would be eight pi force. And then I'm just gonna change the color here. And if I go out again, I'm adding another four onto it. I'm gonna actually end up over here at the same spot, but now it's gonna be 12 pi fourths. So I'm going four pi fourths, which is pi, 
a pi force, which is two pi. Then if I go another four pi force, I'm gonna be at 12 pi force, but I wanna be at 11 pi force. So I'm gonna be one fourth off, I'm right here. So I'm gonna draw it to here. And again, we need to show the direction. And so when I'm showing the direction, I didn't just go here to here. That's not what I did. Okay, it's not what I did. That would have been three pi force. That would have been three pi force. What we're doing, when I'm doing this again, that that I drew was three pi force. To show that we're going around, I go around all the way to here. That is eight pi force. I continue going to here. That's my 11 pi force. You have to show the direction and how many times you're going around, okay? So now on this next section, for this one's asking us, and we, we talked about this, the reference angle, right? So if we want a reference angle, again, just to remind us, my thirds are my bigger ones. My six are my ones that are closer to the x-axis. So if I'm going around from here all the way around to here, that would be pi, but it's also three pi thirds. So that means, if I want to go to four pi thirds, I'm gonna go one third more, which is right here. So my angle would be drawn like this. And what we're always looking for is how far, because we are looking for an answer, a degree or a radian that's in this quadrant one. So it's really how far off was I to the x-axis? So I'm just gonna shade this. This right here, that is my reference angle. How far was I? How far off was I from my x-axis? So I was, I'm just gonna get actually, uh, change that to maybe like an orange, okay. Okay, so I'm going to figure out how, how far is it from here to here? Well, that is pi thirds, and that's my reference angle. Your reference angle is always going to be an answer that would be in quadrant one, okay? Because it's always within this distance, which is like 90 degrees or pi halves, and it's from here to here. How far am I off? and I'm pi thirds off. Now for this one here, these are six. So my six are my, um, my six are the shorter ones. So this is a six. All of these ones are my six. All those ones are my six. I want negative 11 pi six. So I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna go this direction. And as I'm coming all the way to here and I'm dealing with six, this would be negative six pi six, which is a whole, six over six. And then I'm gonna keep going all the way to here and a six pi six and a six pi six is a 12 pi six. And again, it's negative because I'm going this direction. Well, I didn't quite make it to 12 pi six. I was off by one six, so I'm right here. So this is actually gonna come here. Now, the, ang the direction I went was really this, but what we're looking for is always how far above or below the x-axis are you? So, how far above or below is this? Pi six. Okay, so from here to, let's go and highlight, sorry. From here to here, 
is really pi six. So my reference angle is pi six. Okay. Did I make that thinner? And I'm looking for that angle. Okay. So on the next one, um, I'm dealing with my force. So my force are gonna be here, 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 the ones in the middle, okay? And I'm going to 13 pi force. So I am going to first start here and I'm gonna go 13 pi force, which means I'm gonna go all the way to here which would be four pi force. All the way to here, that would be eight pi force. And next week I'll show you how to I do them different than this, but I, I want to just have us understand how we're moving around this. So this is four pi force. This is eight pi force going again around would have been a 12, pi force if I add another eight onto it. So I wanna be at 13 pi force. So going to here is four pi force, to here is eight pi force, to here is 12 pi force. I'm gonna go an extra force. I'm gonna be down here. That's where I'm gonna be. Now, again, in terms of how I was moving, I really went all the way around and then to here. That's what happened. But what am I concerned with? If it's a reference angle, how far off am I from the x-axis? Whether the x-axis is above me or below me, how far off? Well, since I'm dealing with force here, I am going to be pi force off. That's my reference angle, pi force, okay? Now, the next ones, So these ones, they want us to find the measure of each angle. So they're giving us this reference angle here, giving us this reference angle here, pi six, I'm pi six short of the x-axis. So I'm gonna be dealing with pi six. If they give me six here, I'm dealing with six. Don't change it to some other denominator, okay? So I went around here, that would have been six pi six. That would have been six pi six. Maybe I'll do it like this. Okay, so to here would have been six pi six. Okay, going to here would have been 12 pi six. Going all the way, if we had continued to here, okay, if we had continued to there, would have been 18 pi six, okay, because I'm going six, add another six, 12, add another six, 18. So here, I'm gonna be one six short of that, which is gonna be 17 pi six, and that's my answer. Um, on this one here, now pi nines is not a nice one, but we can still figure this out, okay? So if I had gone, if I, okay, I'm going this direction and I'm going here like this. 
But if I had gone all the way like this, if I had gone all the way to here, that would have been a negative because I'm going backwards. Nine pi ninths because that would be a whole. So if I'm two pi ninths short of that, I'm at a negative seven pi ninths. That's where I'm at. Because I would have gone a whole pi to here and pi would be nine ninths or a negative nine ninths because I'm going this direction. But I was off by two pi. So I didn't quite make it to a negative nine pi ninths. I made it to only a negative seven pi ninths. Again, not a nice one on our unit circle, but we can still figure it out from this. On 11, we're going around this. We're dealing with pi uh, thirds. So as I'm going around, I'm just going to kind of jot down to here. I would be at three pi thirds. Okay. I would be at three pi thirds. As I continue to here, that would be at six pi thirds. As I go all the way to here, I'm going to be at six, uh, sorry, three more, which is going to be nine pi thirds. Okay. And then I have this little bit here that I'm going to be adding on to my nine pi thirds, which is 10 pi thirds. And that's my answer. Now, another way to think about this, when we keep going around and around and around and around and you don't want to be doing it that many times, I'm just going to count how many, I'm starting here, I'm going backwards. I went a negative two pi, do you guys agree in that color? I went another negative two pi. So now I've really gone negative four pi. Does that make sense? And then I come here. At this point, I'm at a negative five pi. Okay. So again, this would be pi two pi three pi, four pi, five pi, and then I'm going beyond it. Now, if I'm thinking about negative five pi, it's really going to be in terms of force, I could multiply the top and bottom by four to make it into force. And so I'm really at a negative 20, Pi force is really what I ended at right, right here. And then I'm going to go an extra pi force. So that means I'm going to be at a negative 21 pi force. Now, if you're doing this on your calculator, I would ignore the negative five and just put five plus one fourth. It will give it to you as a fraction. If you convert it, it will do that for you. And it will give you 21 over four. Okay, if you're having trouble with the fraction. I just want you to understand the movement. Okay. On the next section, 
On these ones here, this one I'm just gonna label for us. We drew these the other day on our unit circle. That's a one. This is a root two halves. This is a root two halves, okay? We did that using the, the 45, 45 the other day in our notes. This one um, is my 30, 60, 90. So if this is a one, which is my hypotenuse, then across from my 30 is gonna be half of that, which is a half. And across from my 60 is gonna be that times root three, root three over two. These are all those values on our unit circle that we saw, okay? Again, we did this and worked these out the other day in our notes. I'm just writing them down. So on this part, if I wanna be at pi thirds, okay? So remember my pi thirds, that would be pi thirds right there. They want us to draw and label a triangle. What we can do, you can um, grab a triangle from here. Um, make sure if you hold shift and you start at the point, at the point, and you drag it towards the origin. There's our triangle, okay? And you see, I, I get pretty much a 30, 60, 90. I'm slightly off because I'm not doing it perfect. Okay, um, pi thirds is 60 degrees, okay? Now they want you to label each of these sides. I'm just gonna have us do this and put the coordinate. So this side right here is my one half. This side right here is my root three halves. But what I want us to do, and I'm fine with us doing is this. Coming to the point, like this and give me the coordinates. I'm going short comma long. So short comma long, that's where I am, okay? Short, long. Again, it's really just this triangle right here, one half root three halves because that's my 60 and this is my 60 degrees. Now they want sign. I told you guys on that worksheet that your sign is your Y coordinate. So my answer to this, what is the sign of pi thirds? It is root three over two. That's the sign of pi thirds, root three over two. It's always the Y coordinate. So you want to remember that it's always cosine of your angle, comma, sine of your angle. On this next one, um, we have pi six. Pi six is your shorter one, so I'm right here. And let me just put a dot here. I'm right here. That's where I am, okay? So if I'm gonna draw a triangle for this, again, I'm gonna hold shift, but I'm gonna start here at the point and I drag it to the center. And for this one, let me just get this one out to you guys. This one is gonna be my long comma short. So this one's gonna be my root three halves comma one half. And again, these are all on that unit circle we did the other day. Now, again, they wanted our sign. Your sign is always your Y coordinate. So when they're asking us for this, it's gonna be sine of pi six is equal to one half. Now I'd like for us to try to finish this one. I will take the other one off Finish this, come in, and we will talk more about these on Monday, okay? So five, five, six. 
so first off, my six are the shorter ones, the ones that are closest to the x-axis, shorter distance to the x-axis, because think about a pizza being split into six slices. One six is smaller than one fourth, which is smaller than one third, okay? Um, and then we are dealing with five by six. So if I'm going all the way around to here, that's pi, but it's also six by six. And we're short by one six, so we're right here. So I'm gonna grab a triangle. And I'm gonna start here and drag it to the origin. And the coordinates for this point, this is my long, this is my short. So this is gonna be negative root three halves. Comma, my short, which is one half. And then if I'm dealing with cosine, cosine is my X coordinate. So my cosine of five pi six is equal to negative root three over two. On 16, we're dealing with five pi thirds. So we're dealing with thirds. So thirds, 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 thirds. That's what I'm looking at, but I'm looking at five pi thirds. So as I'm going around again to here, that is pi, but it is also six, uh, sorry, three pi thirds. Forgot what I was dealing with. Three pi thirds. And then going all the way around to here would have been six pi thirds. So I'm short one third, I'm right here. So I'm gonna get my triangle, start it here, go towards my origin. And that's my triangle. Now, in terms of my coordinates, this is gonna be my short comma long. My short is positive, it's gonna be a positive one half. And my long is root three halves, but it's negative because it's going down. So that's my point. I'm looking for sine. Sine is the y coordinate. So the answer to this is sine of five pi thirds is equal to a negative root three over two. Now, next one, my pi um, six, that's these ones here, that's my pi six. I'm looking at cosine, seven pi six are going all the way to here would be pi, but it's also uh, six pi six, which is a whole. I need to go to seven pi six, so I'm gonna be right here. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna draw it to the origin. And you see I'm long comma short. My long is root three halves, negative root three halves. And then my short is one half, it's a negative one half. And again, cosine is my um, X coordinate. So my answer is cosine of seven pi six is equal to negative root three over two. Sine of three pi force. So my pi force are these middle ones here. And three pi force, so going all the way to here would be pi or three pi, sorry, four pi fourths. And we want three pi fourths, which is gonna be right up here. So let me grab my triangle. I'm gonna start here, drag it towards the center. And this one, the pi 
uh, force is really 45 degrees. This is the one where the X and the Y are the same. So this is the one where I'm going negative root two halves because I'm in the negative X direction, positive root two halves. And sine is our um, Y coordinate. So my answer is gonna be sine of three pi fourths is equal to root two over two.